Greetings, Jimmy1985 here, and today we'll be discussing Thomas Midgley Jr., the man who has caused the most environmental damage in all of human history. When we go to refuel our vehicles, we often see the phrase, unlit of fuel only. This, however, was not always the case. For almost 70 years, cars drove with lead in the gasoline. In the early 1900s, engine knocking was one of the main obstacles in having a high-performance, high-horsepower engine. At the time, ethanol was a viable solution to stop engine knock. However, companies like General Motors and Standard Oil did not feel they could make a profit of using ethanol in the gasoline. In 1921, Thomas Mickley Jr., while working for General Motors, had developed tetraethyl lead. He has found that tetraethyl lead would prevent engine knock when added to the gasoline. Upon its discovery of tetraethyl lead, General Motors created a subdivision called Ethyl, in which manufacture tetraethyl lead to put in gasoline. They partnered up with oil companies and added tetraethyl lead into the gasoline. They even had a marketing campaign promoting the use of tetraethyl lead in stopping engine knock citing that all other gasolines without it as inferior quality gasolines. In the modern high compression engine, modern gasoline gives the greater performance required today. The car accelerates more rapidly, climbs hills faster, travels more miles per gallon. In addition to fashioning the molecules to prevent fuel knock, refineries usually add minute quantities of tetraethyl lead to help accomplish the same purpose. This model shows how just the right amount of fluid containing tetraethyl lead and dye is added to the gasoline. The addition of this lead additive in gasoline did not come without controversy. Several people were concerned about lead aerosoling into the air, as rightfully so. To quell these concerns, Thomas Mitchell Jr. poured tetraethyl lead over his hands to demonstrate it is safe for human contact. He then placed the vial of the compound under his nose and inhaled the vapor for over 60 seconds. To the outside observer, this strange stunt seems to have worked. However, he neglected to tell people that it took him over a year to get over the effects of lead poisoning from that one incident. Because of his work, large quantities of lead was poured into the atmosphere as a result of large-scale use of combustion engines. In the decades to come, numerous studies were released documenting the effects of tetraethyl lead in the air. In 1973, the United States Environmental Protection Agency issued out regulations to reduce the lead content of leaded gasoline over a series of annual phases. This was to be known as the Lead Phase Down Program. A 1994 study had indicated that the concentration of lead in the blood of the United States population had dropped 78% from 1976 to 1991. After the success of the tetraethyl lead, Thomas McLean Jr. went on to develop chlorofluorocarbons, also known as CFCs. A common CFC was Freon, and that was used in air conditioners and refrigerators. CFCs were in widespread use for over 50 years. Chlorofluorocarbons are actually safe for humans. However, it is not safe for the ozone layer. CFCs knock out ozone molecules and deteriorate the ozone layer, allowing the sun's radiation to come in. The California sunshine is too much these days, ever since we lost the ozone layer. But that was before sunblock 5000. Just apply a pint to your body and you're good for hours. Sunblock. 5,000. Protection for the new age. Fortunately, 
it did not come to us having to purchase Sunblock 5000 to protect ourselves. In 1973, two chemists discovered the damage that CFCs were causing on the ozone layer. Over 10 years afterwards, the Montreal Protocol was signed. This protocol established a way to phase out CFCs in the environment. As we can see from this graphic, the earth on the left side shows what our ozone layer is doing with the Montreal Protocol in place. If we had not done the Montreal Protocol, the earth on our right side is how our ozone layer would look like. By the year 2050, we will have no more ozone layer left. This would have caused great damage to all life on Earth. Thomas Midgley Jr. did not live to see the impacts his invention had on the world. He was infected with polio, which caused him to be bedridden. Being the inventor that he was, he created a machine of pulleys and strings to help him move around the house. One day, he was found strangled to death but a very same machine. Well, that's it for our episode today. I hope you found that video very interesting. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember to live for the adventure. Bye-bye.